One of the most depicted figures in human history is of Jesus Christ. But have you ever thought, from where did we get this face of Jesus? Having long hair and beard, certainly we don't have an original picture of Jesus at present, or do we? We don't have a definite answer though. But every iconographer and almost every artist depicted him with these common facial features. And all of us might have asked this question, how did we come to know about his face? You might have heard about the story of Veronica and her veil, which she used to wipe the face of Jesus on his way to Golgotha. But that story was mentioned post 10th century. I won't say that it's not a true story, but it has a different origin and that too from West. Probably we can talk about it in a different video. But even before that, Jesus has been depicted a number of times. Like the ancient image of Christ at Priscilla, 4th century, or Christ the Pantocrator at Mount Sinai, 6th century, or the Coptic icon of Christ with St. Menas, 6th century. So we can see this face throughout history. But it raises a question. Is there any historical proof attested to the origin of the face of Jesus? Today we are going to look at a story mentioned in history as well as in the traditions of the Orthodox Church as a proof of how we got this face of Jesus. The story is mentioned in number of literatures. I am considering three main sources. First, the church history written by Eusebius of Caesarea from the 4th century. Second, the doctrine of Adai. And thirdly, the works of St. Jacob of Serut. We can also take the support of Journal of Egeria and the writings of St. Ephraim the Syrian. Collectively, all these proofs can also be seen in the liturgical text of the Syrian Christians, like in the liturgy of Midday Lent, particularly the Catholici that we sing on the day of Midday Lent. These lines are mentioned in the initial part of the video in English. Let us now look at the story. This event takes place when Jesus was in Jerusalem. There was a king whose name was Abkar, Abkar the fifth of Edessa. Once he got sick and it was beyond the power of human skill to cure him. But when he heard of the name of Jesus and his miracles, he sent a letter to Jesus by the hands of his ambassador, Hanna, begged him to come and stay at Edessa and heal his disease. After receiving the letter, Jesus told Hanna that his time is near, so he won't be able to come. But he promised that he would send one of his disciples to cure his disease and preach the gospel there. When Hanna saw that Jesus won't be able to come, by virtue of being king's painter, a court artist, Hanna took a cloth and started painting the face of Jesus. Now here, the tradition says that Hanna was unable to paint it completely. So Jesus took the cloth from his hand, washed his face and imprinted his face on the cloth and gave it to Hanna. Hanna brought this cloth with him to Abkar and Abkar saw this likeness of Jesus and he received it with great joy and placed it with a great honor in the palace. After Christ ascended to heaven, St. Thomas was assigned to go to Edessa. So St. Thomas sent one of his disciples, Adai, and one of the 70 evangelists, also known as Thaddeus, to go to Edessa. And I think now you know the answer why the remains of St. Thomas were taken to Edessa because he is also the founder of the church in Edessa. Now coming back to the image that was made by Christ. Since this image was not made by hands, it is popularly known as the icon not made by hand. And it is considered to be the first icon which Christ himself produced willingly. And this is one of the reasons why an iconographer don't sign his or her name on an icon. Another important 
theological implication of this particular name of not made by hand is incarnation. God, who is indescribable, became describable willingly. Presently, we don't know where is this icon, as it was lost in between and number of churches today claims that it is with them. One thing that we can say with surety is, this icon influenced the artist, the iconographers, to draw the face of Jesus. We hope that this helped you to know the beautiful story of the origin of the face of Jesus. Share it with your children in order to pass it on this tradition. Dear friends in Christ, in this series of Prafe, we try to explore the meaning and learn from different icons, artworks and paintings. So please support Grafe by sharing and subscribing to our YouTube channel.